I have to agree with Bill Burr. The movie Titanic is not a romantic movie, but it is a horror flick. Hey, welcome back to Solo Melodica. I am Tim Kaiser. And on this channel, we reflect and react to music lyrically, looking for a glimmer of God and redemptive qualities in the gift that is music. If this is your first time um, joining the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you are a return visitor, thanks for coming back. If you are a subscriber, thank you for partnering with me. So typically on this channel, we look at uh, music videos, obviously. We react to them lyrically. But I've recently been sifting through all the comments and going through the comments and doing my best to reflect and react to comments that are kind of in a spiritual, biblical nature or manner. Because, you know, obviously this channel is different and many in, in many uh, ways because we're lis listening to music and it may be on the fringe somewhere and I'm picking up an argument um, for spirituality or biblical worldview and talking it through so I get a lot of comments about that and the primary comment I receive is just a general comment is that I'm an atheist not, not me but someone saying I'm an atheist and so XYZ or, or something like that or I can't believe you believe in God I'm an atheist so I'm still kind of you know talking through the comments on atheism I did a video a few weeks ago um, talking about why I believed in God some of the reasons why I believed in God and today I'm going to talk about um, the absurdity of the, the non-existence of God or the despair or hopelessness of the non-existence of God. So in our world, I mean, I'm not an anti-science person at all. I, I believe that the uh, Big Bang, so to speak, um, happened in Genesis 1-1, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The, um, the, the universe has a beginning. Science is pretty much stuck on that I, not much of a disagreement there that the earth has a beginning um and the earth was created the universe was created and i believe the creator is god that's me but also science has proven that our universe is on a traject a tra tra trajectory towards ending it's all going to end sometime and um i mean i'm no scientist i'm no you know, I'm just a regular guy who likes music, just trying to answer some questions, but um, the world will end sometime. Our universe is going to die eventually uh, based on science. And um, so that's one of the things. If, if the universe is just going to end up dying someday and we, uh, I die, you die, our ancestors die, the future people die, and everything we've created on this earth just dis disappears it kind of makes life seem a little bit useless. Um, you know, like hamsters on a wheel, just what are we going through all this for? And so um, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So William Lane Craig, who is, um, a, you know, a, a famous um, philosopher, has a statement, he says, if there is no God, then meaning, value, and purpose are ultimately human illusions. Our meaning, value, and purpose are just things that we kind of make up. There is no concrete, objective meaning, value, or purpose for our life. Now, he does not say that um, a person who does not believe in God has no meaning, value, or purpose. It's not what he's saying. So if you're hearing that, that's not what's being said. He's saying, if there is no God. So, you know, I believe you can... You can act like there's no God, but you probably act like you can say there's no God, but you act like there really is. It's, it's hard not to. God's existence provides us hope for something beyond our current life, um, our life having meaning. I mean, I do you believe your life has meaning? I'd like to hope that you do. Um, I mean, I have two children. Um, they're on the younger ages and eventually hope to have grandchildren someday. I have nieces and nephews. I think back to my history and my grandparents and, you know, I think forward and um, I like to think my life has meaning. But if I just die eventually and nothing beyond that, there's not much meaning in that life. So uh, purpose. 
purpose. Richard Dawkins, who is a uh, who's a famous atheist, brilliant person, said the universe we observe has precisely the properties we should expect if there is at bottom no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. That is a miserable way to think, right? But that's what he believed. He believed there was no designer. He believed, he says there was no good, there was no evil, but I'm sure if someone walked up and popped him in the nose, he would have a problem with it, right? So, um, so it's easier to talk like there is no God and say there is no God, but to act like it's, it's hard to do. So, so if atheism is true, there is no God, then our lives have no meaning, no value, and no purpose. That seems kind of sad to me. Now, this video and this this talk today is not meant to say, "I'm hey, I'm proving the existence of God," because oh my God, is could not handle the fact that He didn't exist, and that seems so sad. I'm gonna cry. No, it's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that the logical conclusion and kind of like playing this thing out, if there is no God, how miserable, hopeless, and just savage that concept is. So. Um, Dostoevsky, who was a famous author, um, if you've ever tried to read any of his books, it's challenging. Crime and Punishment, The Brothers Karamazov, um, challenging. Russian literature is fantastic, but it's tough. Russian literature is tough. He, he had a statement in one of his books, and it says, What will become of men, then, without God and immortal life? All things are permitted then. They can do what they like. So basically he's saying without God or immortality, we can just do whatever we want to do. See, if in the end all we are is food for the worms and for the bugs that are in the ground and all we are is just going to go away and we have, once we close our eyes and our heart stops beating and our brain activity stops, all we are is nothingness, um, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? Why, why does it matter um, if, if, if the immortality and God do not exist, then anything is permitted, is basically what Dostoevsky was saying. So why would it matter? If there is no objective truth, and that would be God in the universe, why would it matter how we live our lives? So if there's no objective truth, why would it matter if you were like a criminal, savage, brutal dictator like Shay, or if you're like Aunt B from the Andy Griffith show or somebody is like, oh, am I baking cookies all the time and just being a nice person? What difference does it make? We can't, at that point, we can't condemn you know, abhorrent, abhorrent behavior like, you know, murder and child abuse. And we can't praise things like, oh, they're a nice person. I had a flat tire and they stopped and gave me uh, gave me some help, you know. Where, where, if without God, where is the objective value in that, right? So, um, in those cases, good and evil just don't exist because there's no compass for it, right? Our lives are just kind of sterile, Spartan, valueless, and insignificant um, if there's nothing beyond what we're experiencing now. When we die, we just cease to exist. So, now back to Richard Dawkins, he once said that. Our whole sole purpose in life is to propagate is to propagate DNA. He was obsessed with DNA, right? So like, you know what, well, that sounds great. You know, what's your purpose in life? Someone asks you, hey, what do you do? Well, I, I propagate DNA. That's my job. I just I just propagate DNA. However, he was a evangelistic atheist. He would go, you know, debate people and talk to people and try to convince them that God didn't exist, which seems kind of weird. Anyway, um, Brilliant, brilliant man. So why, why would it be that someone as brilliant as him would fail to see the actual um, data that I see and, you know, pe other, you know, people who are uh, apologists see? Uh, well, Romans 1 talks about um, that God has made his existence obvious to people and they're without excuse. But what they do is suppress the truth. So sometimes it's more than just information that we need. It's actual revelation, and um, God's made a way for it. So, um, so we have, so no purpose. I, I believe I have a purpose. 
I believe I have a destiny in God, and I believe that my to to know God is my primary purpose in life, and I will spend eternity uh, in heaven when I die with God and not separated from Him. Right. So, um, so even the most ardent ardent atheists still live like there is something to this life. Um, they're they're spending countless hours um, countless hours studying and and finding new methods of science doing science conducting science or inventing things Could, so if we believe that once we close our eyes and our heart starts pumping and our brain waves cease that everything just stops with us so we have a relative contribution a relative purpose to this thing called life but if we take it to its, its end, to the very end, where life just ceases to exist for everything in the universe, that means everything that happened in this life was useless, had zero value, zero meaning, zero purpose. Think about that. Someone as brilliant as, you know, making a, a, a Tesla, the electric car, or even going back to like Henry Ford inventing the, uh, you know, the what do you call it, man, the uh, conveyor systems, you know, whatever. That, you know, the pasteur finding ways to uh, pasteurize milk or, you know, finding different ways to keep people alive, surgeons that have discovered how to keep people alive and all these things that just, because if I have no purpose, I have no meaning, I have no value, that means no one has any value, purpose, or meaning. It means everything we've done since the history of mankind, and most of us can go back, you know, we can go back thousands and thousands of years of recorded history, it means none of this ever mattered. Again, that doesn't prove God exists. That just proves that if atheism is correct, it's a miserable, miserable existence. Um, so God does not believe in atheists. I already mentioned that once in Romans 1, 18 through 20, so if you want to pick that up and look at it. I encourage you to do so. But Romans 1, 18 through 20, actually I'll just find it real fast and read it. It's it's worth reading. Um, he says that for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who, supre who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident with them, within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, attributes, his eternal power, divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. That means that there's going to be no excuse for us if we get to the end and say, well, God, you know, like Bertrand Russell says, not enough evidence, God, not enough evidence. Uh, he's going to say, yeah, it's, that's not going to fly. So, um... So world-renowned atheists paint a dire picture of hopelessness and um, lies without meaning, value, and purpose. That's, that's what they do. Um, but God gives us a different picture. Here, here's something I want, I want to you know, read to you in Psalm 8. Psalm 8, and I believe the writer of Psalm 8 was King David. And he says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers... The moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you think of him? Think about that. If what I believe is true, that the creator of the universe was timeless, spaceless, super intelligent, personal, all loving, all holy, transcendent of everything, created the universe, and we're talking about an earth and Saturn and the moon and the stars and the Milky Way and all the galaxies and the complexity of the human body and the hippopotamus and the jackal and the skunk, <laughs> the laughing hyena and all this stuff. And he's like, what is man or what are people, what is persons that you think of him? And a son of man that you are concerned about him, yet you have made him a little lower than God. So we're, you know, obviously we're not gods. Don't think, if you think we're gods, we're crazy, you're crazy. 
we're lower than God. We're created in his image. He's still God, right? There's only one God. And you crown him with glory and majesty. Wow. That is what God says and the atheist propagators of atheism and evangelistic atheists believe that you have no value, no meaning, no purpose. You're hopeless, helpless. Once you die, you're just worm food and you cease to exist. Um, if that's the case, then why, why wouldn't we act like that? I mean, we, would, we should act differently. But we all, I think, since God doesn't believe in atheists, I believe that most of us still, even we might say it with our mouth, maybe we're confused and say, I don't believe or not enough evidence, like Russell said. But we, um, that seems much hope, more hopeful. Again, I'm not trying to convince you that God exists by saying the alternative is sad. I'm just saying the alternative is sad, savage, hopeless, and dire. So with God, he offers a life of peace and joy, meaning, value, and purpose, and the potential to have a difference in our lives beyond when we close our eyes forever. You know, so I just think the alternative, if, if you are still, you know, if you're one of those who believe, I just don't believe in God, uh, I believe in atheism, you had, you had to admit then that life without an objective truth, without objective truth, without a creator, without a designer, is miserable, savage, joyless, hopeless, helpless, dire, and just miserable. But then again, God made you, created you, and he thinks about you and is concerned about you. So that's it for today. I just want to um, do a brief brief talk about the um, rearranging deck tiers on the Titanic. Go back to my opening with Bill Burr, that if we are just miserable and God doesn't exist, all we are is just marking time and moving chairs around and eventually we'll die and there'll be nothingness. I choose to be believed differently though. Thank you for stopping by today. Um, if uh, this has been a blessing to you, just like the video and subscribe if you'd like to. We usually do videos once every Thursday. I'm releasing Thursday videos right now. I still have a couple more Iron Maiden videos that are coming out. I have some um, System of Down coming out. I have some Cranberries coming out. I have a, a country one from a guy named Hardy coming out pretty soon. So until then, blessings to you. Blessings to your family. Stay safe. And may the peace of God and the grace of God overwhelm you, overtake you, and may you find your uh, salvation in Jesus, not by your works, but by what he did, by faith through grace. And um, I will see you again soon with a new video.